and welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Um, 8 a.m. and of course uh, we're going straight into our first major conversation for today. We're going to be speaking on the NSARS protest one year after. Uh, a memorial that has started uh, since the 1st of October. Of course, um, we've also been seeing the events in the build-up to uh, today. Um, there's also conversations that we'll be having concerning the uh, panel of inquiry that was set up across states in, you know, in, in the country. And of course, um, um, you know, the conversations concerning why there is that many uh, police personnel currently stationed at the Lekki Toll Gate. We're speaking this morning with the lead counsel to the NSAS protesters, Additional Gunlana. Thank you very much. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, morning Nigeria. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Um, so I, I want us to start with, um, before we get into the talking about the panel, let's, let's first of all start with um, what it feels like seeing, because I've, I've seen a lot of pictures and videos of um, police personnel headed towards the toll gate, um, you know, police personnel stationed at the toll gate, um, 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 water cannons and, and whatnot uh, this morning. Uh, so l let's get your reactions to that, um, what, what that really tells you, what, what picture that paints for you. Well, thank you so much. I, I, I think uh, the reality is that um, the police have learned very little. It's an unnecessary show of bravura. It's quite unnecessary. It's even unintelligent. And I'm not just running them down or being salty, and, but it's the truth. If you are intelligent, that means you are reasonable, that means you are logical, that means you are properly evaluating facts and acting appropriately. Why do you deploy um, um, what you call policemen, scores upon scores, and vans and to the toll gate? Why? In fact, they are the one creating tension. Like you said, you said there's been, um, we are marking it, not today, since October 1. Yeah. Has there been violence? No. No. Nothing. In fact, why it is unnecessary is that, is there an NSAS protest now? No. The reasons for the protest last year, and even three years before, they are not existing now. What these gentlemen, protesters and ladies are saying is that we want to commemorate and mourn. That's all. That's all. So what's the basis? And what you will expect from any informed and um, reasonable police force or security chief is to even have gained the confidence of these youths over the past 12 months. And like, like the past three weeks, You'll have been interacting with them. You'll have been sitting on their symposium. We are your friends. Maybe that was misunderstanding and all that kind of a thing. And gentlemen, comfort yourself. What you are saying is that um, you may wish to visit anywhere, but don't impede traffic. Don't disturb people from going to their lawful business. You say you want to place flowers and everything. Yes. You know, occasionally we inconvenience ourselves in church service on Sunday, you know, but everybody understands and it's not going to last forever and that kind of a thing. And then you, you know there could be a setback, there could be a problem, but it's the way you now um, operate intelligently, the dynamics. You can even become very good friends. You know, there are some people you really don't like and there's a conflict, but if both of you are reasonable, you turn it around and you go, oh, even we begin to say, oh, okay, so this is how they saw it. And they themselves say, oh, so this is how, how we be young before. It's understandable. Young people are always idealistic. They're always in a hurry. They think they can get it one day and that kind of a thing. And so that's what I would expect, an intelligent, informed police force. We would name force. How can you be a force? Nigerian police is enough. We will have done. And you know what they, well, they are missing it, and I've been saying it as an accident for years. You see, the strength of the police is not in the gadgetry. It's not in the gadgetry, it's not in the weapons. The strength of the police is intelligence. And how do you get intelligence? Cooperation of the people. Once you get the cooperation of the people, everything becomes easy. When people cooperate with you, and you are law enforcing, Agent, it becomes easy that the one will whisper to you, ah, this is happening here. It's just like a, in any organization, when the leader is loved, I mean, life is easier for him. The same thing with parents, even in our homes. 
So what we are having here is that you now deploy people, uh, people there, and so that they, it becomes even egoistic and chauvinistic and um, very, very backward and primitive, unnecessary. Young people will always be young people. If you go to universities that are not rest, restive, you see that, go and look at the administration. These are either the student affairs department or the vice chancellor close to the students. You relate with them. You go to their hostel. You want to listen to them. You are not going to assume that because somebody is wearing a jeans and is doing his hand like this, that means he is unreasonable. And so we must deal with him. You want to understand him. What is he talking about? And you see, people have merits. Was there no police brutality? There was. Was there no excess? In fact, we have been vindicated in that at the panel. I mean, all these awards that we are giving is not in respect of lucky shooting. It's, in fact, this quantum of petitions that succeeded was in excess of 80%. So go, go ahead and talk about the panel um, okay. and how far we've come with the panel. Um, you know, a lot of people have, have described it as, you know, a, you know, a failed effort, you know, at, um, at, at healing any of the wounds and, you know, giving justice to those who, have, who are affected by police brutality um, in, um, you know, in the last couple of years. I remember, yes, like you mentioned, it started in 2017, um, or, you know, the first, you know, seeming protest for, against police brutality started in 2017. Um, in response to the events on the 20th of October, October last year, the government then go, went ahead to set up those panels. So share your thoughts you know, with us on that one. How successful would you say they have been? Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> I would like to say, first of all, that um, I'm one, there are two lead counsel. I'm one for a part. The other lead counsel is Mr. Olive de and for the other group of protesters. That's one. Then two, I will speak very competently on the ones that are in Lagos, and probably Absolutely. that's the largest and the busiest panel. Uh, if somebody says that panel has not achieved anything in respect of redressing uh, the injuries and all that, or the um, aggrieved feelings, injured feelings, I will with due respect disagree with the person. I was there. Uh, you see, the panel did something. They, they suspended strict address to the law of evidence. They insisted that we are a fact-finding panel, we are not a regular court, and that gives latitude for information to come in. And under the leadership, Honorable Justice Doris Okuwabi, except somebody who is extremely malicious, there's no way you can say you are not giving free hand to present your case to the best of your ability or to the ability of your lawyers. That's one. Then to, uh, if the, the, the evaluation of the facts are correct. The, 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 and and in, whether it was Lagos State government now who now give the money or whether federal government, I should like to say that it was a good gesture. No money actually is enough for life. I mean, you can't say because you give a billion naira you should replace the life of my daughter or something. But you know the symbolism is almost novel. Even when you go to the courts generally, and we have a problem. If it's a criminal action, you hardly get compensated. The assailant may get locked up and all that. Then too, if it was civil actions like fundamental human rights, it's like in Dreamland, you get the money in theory, the award in theory, but in practice, yeah. Getting the police to pay is like passing a, an elephant, not a camel, through a needle. So, but where you have an institution here where awards are made and promptly paid, sure you understand. And uh, maybe, maybe, panel should have added to it that the police should issue apology. But it's, it's, a, it's, it's a start. And uh, I, I think many of the people who came, I, call, I won't want to call them beneficiaries. Many of them who came appeared uh, not dissatisfied. And I'm not saying they are excited or very happy, but at least it's better than nothing, especially those ones who are injured, people, their eyes, their legs, and everything, and you are giving 7.5 million, 5 million, it will help to us surgery and all that. And so it, it's, not, it's not full. But it's better. Okay. But let's also look at other cases. For okay. instance, uh, you know, the panel has actually rounded up. And in some cases, like Cross River State, for instance, 
uh, there's no recommendation. So what should be the next step? What should be the next thing? Well, no recommendation? Yes. In well, one thing is this as a lawyer. Uh, one is strange to uh, comment on facts as properly evaluated. I, I, I should think the Cross River panel is also headed by a judge, a retired judge or something. So, and I think ordinarily, except where they do not find merit, it's possible that people do not prove their case properly because there are cases thrown out too. Mm. They, in, before this panel, there are cases rejected that no, it's not proved. It's not a cash cow, it's not a restaurant where you just give money. You need to prove your case. So it's not that when you come before a panel, at least you must establish your case so that somebody can defend. But since I do not know why the panel arrived at that conclusion, I will not, I'm a bit surprised that there's no single recommendation, no single award. Yes, but, but in that particular case, let's just even stay, I understand the fact that you're trying to be safe, uh, you're trying to stay and-, and uh, you No, professional, safe not just safe, safe professional. Yes. But um, in, in a case like that, let's assume that that's true, because it is true. Uh, what should be the next thing? What should be done? Because, I mean, if, if you people, have, if, if, people, if, you, if you have, because, if um, uh, these persons are not able to say, because you have rightly mentioned that, yeah, there are cases where they would throw it out because they are not able to prove, I mean, there are no facts. To establish, to all of that. yes. Yeah, so w what should be done? Because I'm still sure that people are still grieved, you know, from all of this uh, brutality or all sort of harassment well, and all that they have gone through. Let, let, uh, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something, mm. please. You see, we should always be fair. Uh, to all sides, and that's what I try to stress at the panel. I used to use the word, I would say, fidelity or felicity. I want to felicity. So in fact, there were cases that I applied, even under the answers, that should be withdrawn. I informed the panel that I discovered in the course of my work that uh, they, 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 were, they were not victims of the answers protests that happened at election 20, myself. I told them. But they were victims of other cases of all the other things, but not, but not, 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 not. So you know, you know, when you well, there's a proverb, it says that uh, you learn more the art of presenting your case than learning how to fight, because all fights will will, will end at resolution. If only you know how to fight, but you don't know how to present your case, and you have been given a window of opportunity. It's a different thing if the accusation is that the panel was unfair, did not give them uh, what you call fair hearing, or did not evaluate the facts properly. I mean, I will be very strong on them. What if it's, this? it's, if it's just a wishy-washy uh, case? Maybe these people didn't engage the lawyers, or maybe they didn't give the lawyers uh, their fight. There was a matter I was doing before this panel. <laughs> it was, to my own shock, it was that very morning, in defining the case, that the client, I don't know why he secreted it himself. He now brought up the, uh, what, the x-ray. And the things that I was shocked. I didn't, we have had sessions, he didn't tell me. No, people are funny. So what I would advise those kind of people, if indeed, they, they can, you can always reevaluate your cases and your situation, if indeed you are sure that uh, you are actually injured and you are not lying and you are not exaggerating. You know one thing about many people is that they come with sub-stories mm. yeah. and exaggerate. So if you know you are very sure of your situation, go back to the drum board and go to the regular court. Okay. Um, um, so Gunla, let, let's talk, talk about, um, in, in the time that you, of course, were part of the panel, um, what, what for you was the most shocking revelation or the most shocking you know, uh, thing that you learned or that you heard? Um, and this, of course, covers the 9th of uh, October 2020, um, the you know, presence of, the, of uh, soldiers, um, reports that have, of course, the legacy government has continued to uh, say uh, you know, false or exaggerated uh, reports of killings and some of all of that. What, what shocked you the most? Nothing. That's the truth. Nothing shocked me because I know where we are coming from. Um, if, if it's not the parties uh, that uh, were, that maybe counsel for, the, for, our, for our opponents, 
I expected uh, some higher degree of felicity, you know, um, that we, the way we are trained, we are supposed to put first the interest of justice first, then the second, the dignity of the court. The other ones about clients is supposed to be uh, some, but it will appear that there are some side that wants to win at all cost. And then the one that I find interesting or maybe shocking, not the military, the military turned to be cowards. They brought a general who was not an eyewitness. The panel has them to bring the people that were there, Colonel Bello, who brought in the troops for the dump barracks, they ran away. They said they should bring General Omata, who came to stop the carnage, at least to intervene, to put a stop to it. was in the video. Mark. It was, but yeah. it, it didn't come to. Even General Ndagi, who is representative of the military on the Security Council, didn't come, you know? And so, and even another thing that was maybe shocking and embarrassing was that there's nobody in the Security Council of Lagos State, which included the governor, the chief of staff, the speaker, the secretary, to the government of Lagos State, the commissioner of police, the DSS, nobody came. In fact, Lagos State government uh, sent in uh, the head of civil service, Akim, um, Mr. Akim, um, what's the name is his name now? Forgotten. Uh, Murio Kola. That was a civil servant. He's not a member. He's not even the chief of staff. He's not political. He's not supposed to be political. He's not a security person. So you are the chief of staff who come because a member of the Security Council, the, uh, what do you call this person? The secretary to government who come. If you say the governor is too big or is constitutionally shielded. Yes. These people didn't come, you know. So that's, that, that's not good. And then another thing that I find amusing uh, was uh, <laughs> the LCC video. Even we as laymen, we presented and we demonstrated before the panel that the uneven space of the, we call it oscillation, the rotation or the panning yes. was uneven. And you have claimed that it's an automatic thing. If it's automatic set, you cannot have 15 seconds rot rotating now. Suddenly, it will now become 45 seconds of three minutes and everything. Then the forensic expert who examined it confirmed it. In fact, he said LCC has questions to answer. And then another one that I find interesting is the police. At least the military came and said we were the at the end of the day we were there and said we were there because the governor uh, I mean he saw the reality of what was going on that the police had no capacity again and invited that they were surprised that the governor or, uh, would not be denied all this kind of a thing. But that's that, and then they said we, they, we came in with blank ammunition, but admitted under cross examination that they also came with a backup of live bullets. Now, for the police, the most, and that's why I say I wonder at them. Because their senior officers, Ekelon, are these are educated, highly educated people. How can you come to the how can you come to the panel to say that on the 20th and on the 21st, you are not at the lucky to gate at all? And not only that, that you were actually all of you, Marco Police Station that has the jurisdiction, all of you were in your station defending your um, station against being burnt and all that. Why do you know that story cannot, cannot hold? Governor, government lawyer, maybe innocently, now has them to present their arms diary. Well, we call it arms and ammunition diary. Each station has it yes. and everything. They, they, they tendered it. And uh, I only need to scrutinize and I found out and I pointed out in our address, written address to the to the, to the panel that go to the 28th of October, how about 33 policemen who were issued arms on that day? Only 12 or 13 did station guard duty by the diary. All the others were posted out, and including patrol, patrol. And this, uh, the DP had come, a CACSCSP came to confidently tell the panel that. All of us, all of us were in our station. The same time, on the 21st, he claimed that, in fact, when I put the question to him, so when did you, when did the military arrive? He said, I don't know. I don't know whatever they did there. I said, so when did you get to know? He said, well, the next day in the evening, through social media. 
That's what a police chief was saying before the panel. But the arms diary again shows on the 20th. He said they didn't leave. He said the arms diary shows that on the 21st again, only about 13 or 15 policemen were stationed at the guard by their own diary, by their own hands. All the others were posted out and also on patrols. So what are we talking about? And we are giving evidence through our witnesses, not one, not two, different ones, that policemen wearing mufti were identified shooting people. And, that, and there were reports. And I think one of your sister did print, print media, I think Premium Times or something, did uh, a big investigative story of that. Uh, part of it we turned out before the panel. So these are the things that, um, if you ask me, I won't, say, I won't say shock me, but amuse me sadly because they are unnecessary. This kind of a panel also happens supposed to be a kind of a truth, a truth panel. You know, people do make mistakes. People do make errors. You know that in the old days, parents of these people who gave birth to people like me will be in their eighties, and then they believe that actually the child is their property. They can discipline you anyhow. They can beat you anyhow. But you, when you can reevaluate, and within the culture, you can still call your children, I apologize. I was sorry. What I did to your mother when I was young, I was drunk that time, I was not a believer or something. You are supposed, when you are, you, decency does not mean you are perfect. Decency is to admit error. And like the gentleman on the cross, uh, for those who are familiar with the story of the Bible, the gentleman on the right says, yes. we. Uh -uh. We are entitled to this punishment. That's a decent man. He said, we were rapists, we are killers now, and we did it. Uh, but first, well, this one, this one, Abolo now, this one. This one, a Jew, now this one, a gentle, this one, this isn't anything. The other man was behaving typically human. He said, eh, if you are indeed the son of God, you say, yeah, save us. We must be decent. We must be decent. When we make errors, we must be reasonable and decent to say, own up to it, even institutionally. A whole country that apologize and um, Japan, somebody apologized, and so some people say, oh, we, have, we dropped the bomb on Japan, something, another contract, you, you know, you own up. Mm. But so do, do you think that with all of the facts and all of the evidences, like you have rightly mentioned, do you think there would be any sort of arrest or discipline prosecution uh, afterwards? We, 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 we expect that. We expect, we expect that part of their responsibility, you know, when you overhaul, when you have a situation like this, you know, look, look at this situation again that we noticed. Appre given the evidence given by the military or something, that means, where can the military, the military came to say that they were there at 645, not knowing that the coffee was to start by nine. That's, that's huge. You, you, you've been set as a supplementary force to help internal security. And in fact, you are a major stakeholder because the situation is like as if law and has broken down. So as at the time, whether you are shooting live bullet, whether you are shooting blank bullet, your presence there was actually unlawful because you, are, you, you could only be called out to enforce a law that is operation. And you can only begin to enforce by nine. Then the police said, we were not there at all from the 14th. We have left that place. We don't even know what was happening. Sure you understand. When you begin to now, is there a breakdown in communi communication? That's awful. If indeed that is the fact and you are not covering up, that's very, very awful. And then secondly, you see a mass of people. Assuming you even want to enforce a coffee within the rightful time. Do you do that by opening bullets? Uh, let's say it's blank. Let's even say it's blank. Oh. You, <laughs> let's say it's blank. If, as we are here, somebody should throw banga, ah, banga, ordinary banga. People have robbed people with toys also. Yes. You need to be a soldier, a trained person, to know that this is a toy or maybe the way the person handles. But if it's a normal civilian, you go there. Is this how you disperse people? Is this how you disperse people? By shooting up and down and straight at them? You don't do that. No use of tear gas, nothing, and all that. It's not, and these people are not armed. They are not terrorists, they are not bandits. They are, let's say, they are just, even at best, you say, oh, Miss Guy, get loose. That, even the evidence before the party, the, the, the military and the police did not say, oh, we saw them with guns, we saw them. 
the police only alluded that someone, some people are smoking there, but they, they threw pure water at the governor. These are things that are necessary to use this kind of quantum of force. So how would you expect the panel to take all this into uh, consideration and to look at what is happening? Well, because you are, you, are, you are supposed to be the people's police. You are supposed to be the people's army. You are not supposed to be their enemy. I mean, it's, it's, it's bad for the national and international image of the, of the country. Oh, but that, that would be for a country that cares um, about its national and international image. Because I remember that the president did respond um, when he eventually addressed the country then and said uh, foreign nations should mind, basically mind their business. Um, I, I want you to go further, or briefly now, to just share your thoughts on the seeming disregard for the panel by the police and, um, and the legal state government, which you already mentioned, uh, that they almost didn't show up. Um, but there's a particular uh, case, uh, one of them in Anambra, which, you, of course, I know you weren't uh, a part of, um, a, a police officer, uh, an officer named James Wanfo, who, you know, was very, very popular as one of the people who was accused of multiple and multiple of these cases, um, um, murders um, of dozens of people, um, who also was summoned by the panel in Anambra State and never showed up uh, till date. Um, he's currently, of course, um, he, he was eventually fired by the Anambra State government then uh, as his chief, chief security officer, but currently, uh, according to reports, is now the CSO to uh, uh, Charles Soludo. Um, so I, I want you to share your views on why the police, the Nigerian police, didn't seem or doesn't seem in any way to want to be accountable for any of these crimes committed. Okay, thank you so much. And I thank you for raising this issue. You see, uh, you, when you have a problem like this, the, to me, respectfully, the wisest thing to do is to go to the roots. The police is like the, let me say, the police, the army, the security agencies and all that, they are merely like the teeth and claws of a creature. I don't want to use a beast. They are the enforcers of the will of the creature. So if so, however sharp the teeth is, it's only when it is used, yes. like a crocodile snap. If it doesn't snap it, in fact, I've seen videos where some birds come and pick the, uh, meat from the teeth of the crocodile. So it does become infested. And they, they, don't, they don't clamp on those things. But the same thing with the claws of the leopard or something is sometimes it's on sheets. It's only when they use it. So the, the, the police and the military or any security agency, they don't have the brain. The brain have is with the political controller. It is how they are directed that they act. And this is the problem. We are having the problem of a government, not just this government too, not just this government, too. in Nigeria, the situation is that the government is not the government of the people. It is the government of Kebar for the Kebar purporting to be acting for the, uh, for the people. people. This is the problem. And if, if, you, if you want to test my hypothesis, whether it is true, just ask yourself. If you ask you, what would the Nigerian government do in a particular situation? I will tell you I know what they would do. Do you ask me, what do I know? I will say, just look at what do the people of Nigeria want. Whatever the people of Nigeria want, governments must be opposed to it. And whatever government wants to do, people must be opposed to it. So you find that, that there's a disconnect because we don't have a people's government. It's not Buhari that uh, started it. There are a lot of them. It's a, just a pity that a government like this and an environment of um, environment of democracy. Many of the founding fathers of this particular conglomeration of, uh, well, because it's a conglomerate, APC, were Nadeku people, were people who suffered under Abacha and all that kind of a thing. You know, labor leaders like Oshie Omele and all that. So even under Jonathan, people like uh, General Buhari and all of them, they did um, rallies yes. and all that. So it's a tragedy that when you now have this situation, okay, the kind of climate of fear, of tension we have, in what way is it so different from 
the pre 1990, particularly the Abacha years, the, even the Babangida or the Sapriot, 1993, 94, 95, uh, the Kokori years and Wahala. In what way will you say is different? So the problem is not the, you see the police, though, as you see them, if they, you know, they are, um, they are programmed, they are programmed. When they say move, they move. When they say stay, they stay. When they say don't look at it, and that's even included the FCC. There are people they prosecute, there are people they don't prosecute. You know? Yes. And you see the, the character of the FCC always mirror the character of whoever is the president of the era. The Ribadu era, you look at it, Ribadu with Oba Sanjo and everything, and look at the Madam Waziri, Jonathan and everything, and look at the Magu and uh, Buhari, uh, Buhari that the man was never made full chairman. He said, nah, the acting chairman. How can somebody be acting chairman for five years? But when he pleased them to remove him, okay, what is the fate of that one? Yes, the man might have done wrong, but everything has gone to the cooler. That's all. And then you have not brought in Bauer. And there are a lot of uh, Pandora papers and everything. Some select people. They used to say, the story of the AUFC, they say, ah, we only act on petition. When some people wrote petition against Tinubu and everything, they drop petition with nothing. Nothing has uh, happened. So in a way, these security people, they're like the civil servants too. The civil servants do, do the, biddings. The, the biddings. And they try to, the, the, the so much influence of the executive, the political class is so much that the judges uh, fear. Uh, the judges except you know, the era of the putters, of the... Um, the so what's the name of the man in the bad a car there sure and all those kind of things when they did the showing car the showing car uh, trial yeah. and yet the value was that upon the fact it was not proved you may not be able to get that kind of a situation again there was a time when a high court judge said that he will commit Adamushi Roma secretary to government to prison if he doesn't appear in his court. They were at the middle of the meeting, the cabinet of Guan released him to go and appear before. Is it Justice Ginaldo or somebody? Now, even if the Supreme Court asks his sergeant, a sergeant, a corporal to come, he will not come. So you, you find, okay, look at the Lagos panel too. It, I think it took a lot of brigmanship to even get General Ibrahim to come. And immediately he came, all the other summons to the other people. They just ignored it. And I thought the panel would be, you know, that's where your maturity and gravity has come in. I think the, the, the panel is led by a very experienced judge. You know, a court is a maxim. A court will not act in vain. Yeah. So what are we going to do now? This military refused to come. The Fed are even doing us a favor by coming, by bringing. But when the man was, to me, with due respect, when his testimony was, could not survive the crucible, of the fire of cross-examination, they thought that the best thing to do is to do damage control and not to shop again. What can the panel do? I asked for someone like Fashola to be brought. We call him Agent Fash. You know, that's the gentleman who discovered, <laughs> who discovered, who discovered the music camera and everything. The camera was never brought. The gentleman did not come up. So, so this, that will tell you the character of the uh, uh, political elite. The, the, that is why we need to change the system. We need to change the system. They feel that we are not citizens. They feel that we are subjects. Yeah. And, and the governors, the president, the commissioner, they think that they are royalty. You know, you don't, if somebody is your servant, you, you, does it have a business to argue with you? No. No, 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 no. You just give orders. Yes. You right. give, so, so that's the problem. So the police that we are talking and, uh, and the military that we are blaming, let's look deeper. Is the controlling brain that is the problem. We are yet to get decent, accountable leaders who feel that the people have is the owner of sovereignty. Sovereignty belongs right, to the people. Yes. Um, we want to, of course, uh, share with you a report from the event uh, that took place uh, on this day last year. 
And, um, of course, right after that, we'll be having a live uh, conversation with someone, um, of course, still concerning the NSARS protest. And then we can talk about the, you know, on a, on a personal level, a victim's level, with uh, Mr. Gulano when we come back. So enjoy this report. For more than a week in October 2020, peaceful protesters were on the streets of major cities across Nigeria. Demanding justice for victims of police brutality, the dissolution of the special anti robbery squad known as SAS, and the reform of the police force. On October the 20th, these protesters at the Lekito Plaza, a key rallying point for demonstrations, refused to leave. Basically, that day, that was on the 20th, um, at about noon, they for say 12 to 12. In the afternoon, we got an information that was, there was going to be curfew, and that curfew will be starting at um, 4 p.m. But we were still um, present at the toke, and the question was: Are uh, our demands be met? Our five demands have they been met before in imposing curfew on us? And we were still debating on that. The yeah, people were still protesting and saying they were going nowhere. Knowing fully well that some people didn't even come from Lagos, some people came from outside Lagos, and there yeah, are roads are blocked. There was uh, practically no movement. We are still debating and people insisting that until the government attends to our need, we got another information at about 2 p.m. or thereabouts. I really can't place my hands on the correct timing right now. That the coffee has been moved to. I think 9 p.m. I mean, yeah, 9 p.m. And yeah, we started celebrating like, okay, it's also an advantage for us to keep hearing. And then if anybody was um, preparing to go to their home, that was an ample time. So but while we were doing that, uh, later in the afternoon, we started hearing gunshots. What started out as a peaceful practice for better governance and a better Nigeria turned bloody that night. People falling down with gunshot wounds. There was an old man with a native all stained with blood. There was a guy beside me wearing a white shirt. He was not breathing. He was just there. There was no gun, uh, gun, gun uh, wound on him, but he was just lifeless. There were a few other people who were shot and they were being carried um, from where they were to where we were all gathered. There was a lady that was shot on uh, a waist. I don't know if she's still alive. I'm still trying to find out. There was a guy that was shot in his ass and we were able to hold them still because they brought them from where they were shot at the, the toll gate because we're in a corner. So they brought, well, the FCC um, center. So they brought them from there to here. So we're trying to put down the, the, um, the bullet tunnel, trying to hold it down. And we had to put pressure so it doesn't, you know, affect them. So we took them to the hospital. One of the protesters, Obiano Jode, also known as DJ Switch, streamed the shooting to more than 100,000 people on Instagram Live. Nigerians watched as people tried to remove a bullet from the tie of a protester as another took his last breath. Before her battery died and the live stream ended, DJ Switch said they were surrounded by soldiers with blocked exit points. Later in the evening, a, a, I think a most senior um, military officer came in um, to kind of um, douse the tension and then he was trying to address us and you know the protesters were like this should have been the first thing not shooting at us randomly without even you know engaging in any conversation and so it, 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 it kind of was trying to you know ask us to calm down and people were not ready to listen because at that point people were already injured some people were already dead and I summoned up courage to raise my hands and I walked um, in the direction to ask him, sir, can we get ambulance for those people that are already down? And I said, where, where do we have ambulance? I told him somewhere around, I know we used to have ambulance, you know, packed around. And then he said, okay, go get ambulance. And I said to him, look, I'm not going to go because even the armies were saying, everybody go home, go home. And then as people were running, 
to go to their homes. They were shooting at them. I said, so I wasn't going until they gave me someone to cover me to get to that point where I can at least reach out for help to get ambulance and which he granted, gave me one of his old leaves, I guess, to walk me out because there were other hands at the end tail and and it was at the back of the night they could do anything. So I was able to get out and I met some guys uh, that I approached that called for ambulance and on getting the ambulance to that point where we had other armies um, barricading the road. They didn't allow for access um, at that point. When the ambulance came around, they weren't allowed to help. They told them to go back. We couldn't um, really take people that were shot, we couldn't really take them out because we had been surrounded. So um, there were some ambulances that came for a rescue, but the soldiers said no, and the soldiers had to take them away by themselves with their own vans and all that. The accident of the casualty is still disputed, but no fewer than 15 persons are believed to have been killed. Efforts to reach the Nigerian army spokesperson proved abortive, as the military said it won't speak since the latest state panel investigating the matter was still sitting. The Lucky Toll Plaza was set ablaze, following the shooting, and no fee has been collected there since October the 20th, 2020. And some of the protesters wanted to remain that way and have insisted on the place being turned into a memorial venue for the killings that took place. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. Really, um, really, really sad um, reports, you know, and of course, um, just sharing revelations and personal experiences. Um, as to what happened on this day um, one year ago. Um, I'm going to speak with uh, Mr. Gulano next, um, talking now about the inability, you know, and of course the struggle with uh, the conversation on proving the number, a number of casualties, proving the number of people that actually, you know, lost their lives on that day, 20th of, of October last year. Um, share your views with us on that one, you know, wh okay. why, why was that so much of a challenge? And um, the government continued, of course, to fight those figures. Thank you so much. Uh, it was uh, a situation of huge trauma. The incident of 20th October 2020, and the um, uh, the young people were scattered. And you know that I say young people, even in Nigeria, even when you're up to like 20, 30, 30, 30, most of them are still under their, their parents' influence because no jobs really and all that. And because of our African culture, you are generally, family ties are still very okay. And so when this thing turned very ugly and people died, many parents, and I'm talking from experience of my interaction, who are badly scared, they were prepared to disown their children, the ones who managed to survive. And another issue is that these people uh, they are drawn from all over. They not, 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 not that they know themselves. They are not students of the same campus. I would say oh, students or something or the same neighborhood. People came from far and wide. It's like a kind of a mecca. You just go to the big, we call yes. it barricades, Ikeja or um, um, Lucky Togate. So when people get you, so just know some people, oh, I saw her yesterday. Her name is Tina something. Not that you really no, know no. themselves. Yes. Maybe the celebs, maybe they know themselves. But the average person, they don't know themselves. And then they were so mightily scared. So much so that by the time the panel sat, the first earliest sittings, <laughs> there was nothing. The, the pan, nobody came. And that was the time people were saying, ah, it's a lie. Maybe it was a video, it's a shooting, it's a fiction. That didn't happen. That uh, where are they? Where, okay, if people are dead or if people are injured, if they cannot come up, where are their parents and everything? We had to rally around uh, to try and make contact with them. Fortunately, we had participated at the Ikeja barricade all through. So we've made some contacts and we had to persuade. We couldn't even get the boys. It was three ladies who were there, who were prepared to appear before the panel and they were the one who opened the talk. In fact, the first day when I came to the panel and announced appearance for NSAS movement, if you see the way the alacrity by the way the lawyers to the government, to LCC, how they jumped up raising legal objection. That my, my lord, we are not we are not against Ogunlano 
uh, appearing, but NSAS movement is not registered. It's, there's not, it's not a registered body, it's not a corporate body. So how can somebody come up and say that it's representing NSAS? Mm. Because they were so sure that the climate of fear was so thick that mm. this group could not come up. But glory be to God, these three ladies stood up, I called their names, and that's how we, we began to have legal representation. Because if we didn't cross that level, then those one now manage to persuade other people. There are people, especially the boys, they refused at three, four, five. We've taken their deposition. They said, no, sir, that I know. I'm not coming again. And some people came asking about after them. And mm. so, 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 so. In fact, there were a set of people who came to the bus with one day. Their parents refused for them to come out from the bus. We want, that's when before the, they gave us three months to register petitions, ending December 21 or so. <laughs> With the ones we managed to put in there, are just a tiny fraction. You no, know, the, the people are afraid, and some of them had to leave Lagos. In fact, some of them travel outside the country as I learned. This is the problem. So, but by the time um, the earliest, the brave ones, when they, have, uh, when they come to the panel, you have to, you, they dress like ninja. They have to cover their face. They have to do something. They have to show that they will not be, you know, but I want to pay tribute to people like uh, Dabira, uh, Dabira Ayoko, people like uh, Victor Oniru, people like Kamsi Chuku, people like Sarah Ibrahim. All of these are ladies uh, who are very hero heroic and um, who came out. They encourage. There are other people. So right. by the time we came and we're not showing people with uh, amputated legs and everything, so we understand, ah, so this thing is real. But All do right, you think that on. any, okay, just uh, before. Yeah. Uh, no, just hold on. So we, we can bring in um, um, a lawyer who's joining us via Zoom. His name is uh, uh, Timmy Olagunju. Uh, good morning, Mr. Olagunju. Can you hear us? Timmy. Oh, I think we've lost him. He's right, one of ahead. the council. We'll, we'll reconnect with him. Okay. okay. Yes. So, well, my question is right now. Do you think anything is going to change? Has anything really changed? Because mm -hmm. we're having this conversation today. Uh, all of the procession is actually going on. People are still on the streets. And uh, like you rightly mentioned, they're not saying we're protesting, but they're saying we want to mourn, uh, mourn those that uh, lost their lives in uh, the cost of the event that happened last year, although the government is still somewhat denying that uh, uh, nothing really, really happened. But do you think anything is going to change? Has anything really it, changed? It, it will change, but it will not change now. It will not change immediately. You see, power does not concede. This is the nature of power, especially when you are in the habit and tradition and culture of oppressing people. You know, just like uh, the biblical story of Pharaoh, despite the severe economic sabotage, because in modern times, all what the Bible recorded about Moses doing, is severe economy, you turn the river into blood, that means you sabotage the agricultural economy, you turn hill and stone on their farms, you destroy the farms, even biological warfare, uh, in terms of the plagues, Logos of the frogs and everything. Yes. Even when you commit, well, we say, we call it in modern times, we call it genocide. Mm. When the Israelites lost, uh, the Jews lost their firstborn all over. And they okay, okay, go, go, go. Ah, at the same time, the oppressor, ah, this, you know, those days, labor is the major form of production. And the, a whole nation of people were the, were, were the slaves of another country. And there were many. So, ah, is this how people are going to go? So they have to run after them, despite all the horrors they have gone through. Um, to me, it's an allegory of the human nature. Human, you know, when people are used to cheating, you know, some, even at domestic level, some husbands, they are not responsible, but they've, they've dominated the wives to the level that I can't, you, you mean the car you are using is your wife's car. But people did not know. And you are using the car to be carrying women, not only that, you carry the woman to the house. And the woman, you order the woman to cook for the, for the, we call it side, I don't know, concubine, but they call it side chicks now, something now. And if I don't do it, now slabs I will get to and that kind of a thing. So you find that that kind of a person is used to it. So maybe when, the children are going on and say, Daddy, you have to stop. The, ah, the man says, ah, you, you, you. 
The same thing. You might, so, so what's happening mm -hmm. is that, and that's why we're encouraging the people, the, the youth, because they are the future of the country, not to relent. Every epoch has that. Do you know, remember during the colonial era, mm -hmm. the nationalists, you know the secondary school boys? We had to protest. Secondary school boys had to protest because it's in the time of, we want Nigeria for Nigerians. And then post-independence, when we had the military, even when you have things like Operation West, there were people in this western part of the country rejected the rigging of a particular government, and then the military era, this particular democracy, you saw how it came to be. Yeah. The, the period of uh, Babangida, Abacha, Shonekan, were very tough periods. All right. Uh, so, 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 the, okay. Mr. Golan, apologies. Okay, uh, no we, problem. We, we want to speak with uh, Tomi Olagunju. Uh, uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Olagunju. Uh, can you hear us, Mr. Olagunju? Yes, I can hear you clearly. All right. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Um, we have just a few minutes. So, I, I want you to go ahead and share um, your views on um, the whole conversation concerning NSARS. How far we've come, the events for today, and and the, you know the the you know success of the panel, if we if you can. Mr. Oh. Olagunju, can you okay. hear us? Okay. Um, well, oh. my, my view of NSAS, probably. Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. I can hear you clearly. Yes. Yes. So my my view of NSAS is basically you know uh, in the context of the reviving of the principles of social contract, which is that the government is the employee and the people are the employers, right? And if, you know, you rightly look at it, because he will forget history is doomed to repeat same. If you look at it, we've had years of military interregnum and we've not really nurtured ourselves sufficiently since independence in the culture of democracy. Right, and so, which is a culture of engagement of the citizens with the government. And because we lack that culture and we are just evolving in that culture, issues of this nature are bound to arise where the government sees an engagement of the process or a call for policy action as a means to clamp down on citizens. So the NSAS protest for me, that view, revives that social oh. All right, we may be losing Mr. Lagunju there. Um, we also have uh, Akin, who is at the toll gate currently, uh, to share with us what exactly is going on. He's live at the toll gate. Uh, good morning, Akin, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. How are you guys doing? Where? We are outdoors. I'm at the uh, Lekki toll gate. We are having a citizens drive through protest, as you can see us, in very peaceful formation, not making trouble. As uh, a matter of fact, I just spotted a survivor by the name of Solomon, who was shot in the chest at the same target a year ago. I am putting on the same t-shirt I wore when I watched my fellow young Nigerians get shot by this government innocently, only simply exercising their constitutional right to freedom of assembly. Today we are back here. We are unrelenting. We are not scared and we will protest. We are not disturbing the peace. Our voices will be heard and I'll be glad to take your questions. Is there is there any interference from the uh, police uh, men who are present at the toll gate? So far we've seen uh, a couple arrests of young Nigerians who came out of vehicles or probably came without uh, an automobile. Uh, but as far as interrupting us okay, driving okay, through, okay, we've not seen that. Okay, uh, again, they're somewhat restrained. Uh, the media is present. Uh, a lot of us are recording the issue. Um, no, I think we may have also lost you. Uh, if you can, of course, uh, I hope we, we can reconnect with the time that we have. But um, it's, a, it's a really emotional day, um, Mr. Ogulano. I think you, more, you must agree with that. And um, all these it conversations are here to move forward. Yeah. Um, we're, we're Akin, can you hear us? <laughs> Welcome back, Akin. Yes, I'm coming yeah, back to you guys. All right, so go ahead. I, I want you to uh, describe what today's events will be like. Um, how many times are you going to be driving through the toll gate? 
Um, what would it uh, really I'll, signify? I'll, I'll, I'll give you a view. Uh, the hope is for us to get a to see the standard, the candidates on the side of the road. Um, people are in a very different mood. We are not going to destroy Lagos, contrary to some of what you heard in the media. We are not a violent group of people. We are not hoodlums. As a matter of fact, I am driven, I am being driven by our only president, Mr. Macaroni. I am privileged to have him in the vehicle as my chief rider. And again, we are here to really make sure our voices are heard. We are going to do it peacefully. And I'm going to show that the Nigerians are unrelenting and will continue to make sure our voices are heard. All right. Um, be safe out there. And um, thank you very much for the time that you've shared with us. We would thank you. definitely I reconnect with you. Um, yeah, we'll reconnect, reconnect with you in, in a bit, uh, hopefully during the news. Um, Additional yes, um, Ogulano, we truly appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, the wealth of knowledge that you've shared with us this morning and also, you know, the service that you've also rendered to uh, these protesters and those people who had sought justice um, uh, during the... Um, uh, protest. Um, okay, I think we've been we've been asked to bring back uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Timmy. Um, welcome back. Uh, if you can hear us clearly now. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. All right. So, if you can, in in just about a minute, please share with us. You know um, what today signifies, and um, if there's still any hope for justice for those people who lost their lives last year. Well, well, like I said, today signifies the fact that there's, there's a remembrance of that revival of the social contract between the citizens and the government and a revival of our democratic culture. Because we're in a democracy, not a military regime. And in a democracy, the currency of the government is trust between itself and the people. And that today signifies a remembrance to the government of the need to build that trust because that trust is completely eroding itself. Now, in terms of justice, the report of the panel needs to be taken into executive action so that it does not end up like the um, Oputa panels and the laudable reports that we've had in this country. And so if we do that, then justice is said and done. And justice needs not just to be said and done, it must be evidently seen to be done, because evidence is the end of argument. Thank you. Um, thank you also for joining us and for your time this morning. We hope that we can reconnect with you sometime during the news uh, bulletins today. Uh, good morning once again. Um, and once again, Mr. Gulano, um, I once again appreciate your time thank and you. the service that you've rendered. Madam, thank, thank you, you. Um, thank you so much for coming. And we would love to see you again. Thank um, you. We appreciate it. Bless you. Absolutely. All right, this is where we'll be wrapping up. Yeah, it has been an amazing conversation. Uh, thank you so much for being part of this conversation. And to catch up on all of the conversation, uh, do not forget to follow us on uh, Instagram and Facebook. And on YouTube is at Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Boko. And I'm Osao Gi Obon. See you doing the news.